Their ability to force turnovers and take the ball the other way to try to get easy baskets and the speed of Remy Martin, Alonzo Burge, Holland Woods. Can that carry the day or is it going to be the steady tempo, more of a half court game of Villanova where they like to shoot threes, they like to get the ball into the post, play inside out, not just with their big guys, but with their guards. That's going to decide this game. Who can win the battle of tempo? And what about the battle between Remy Martin and Colin Gillespie? Two outstanding guards, All-America caliber. This is going to be a lot of fun. No doubt about it. It's Villanova tries to pick up the W and the championship, the 2K Empire Classic. I'm interested to see what Arizona State is capable of doing in order to get this game at the speed that they want. How do they speed it up? We'll see. They're going to try it with pressure, whether it's full court pressure, pressure in the half court. But they've got to do a better job of playing defense without fouling than they did against Rhode Island. Arizona State wins the tip, and they have the ball. Martin handling right here. A couple of prize freshmen for Bobby Hurley, not just Josh Christopher, but also Marcus Bagley, the younger brother of Marvin Bagley. And Jermaine Samuel is on Remy Martin. That's putting a lot of size on the smaller Martin. Burge inside and puts it in. All right, let's take a look at tonight's starting lineups, and they're brought to you by Carvana, Gillespie, Moore, Daniel Samuels, and Robinson Earl. For Bob Hurley, his starting five, it'll be Martin, Burge, Christopher, Bagley, and Graham. Arizona State leading it to zip here in the early going. And in our third place game, there's a lot of quickness on the court, including Fax Russell. There's a lot of quickness here. Graham charged with the offensive foul. will go the other way. And Bobby Hurley, sixth season as head coach at Arizona State. Only Pac-12 program to make both the 2018 and 2019 NCAA tournament. They were well on their way last year, 20 and 11, 11 and 7 in the Pac-12. Jay, should they win their league this year? I think they've got a great shot. I mean, Stanford's going to be a challenge. Oregon probably the one team that may have a little bit of an advantage because of experience. But I like Arizona State's chances to win the Pac-12. Gillespie gets inside, now gives out more. Robinson Earl probing, gets inside, and it knocked away out of bounds, 14 of the shot clock. Nice job by Jalen Graham to block that shot. Just poised in the post by Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Nice little drop step, but Graham was right there to wipe it away. You're going to see this Villanova team play a lot out of the post. And right there, Samuels grabs it, puts it up, gets fouled. He'll shoot two, and they get the foul on Bagley. Jay Wright, two times he's won it all. 2016, 2018, quite a culture he has created at Villanova, one of the top coaches in the sport. Yeah, a certain Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Famer, Jay Wright, has fashioned a career that few coaches can match. Just a, done a tremendous job at Villanova, and he's, he's Villanova through and through. Built the best culture in college basketball. Tied at two here in the early going. Our championship game, the 2K Empire Classic. Christopher goes to work, gets inside, puts it in. Pretty nice move there by the freshman. Just explosive. Josh Christopher has got a ton of ability. He can get to the rim, he can shoot it. Great in transition. Daniels tried to turn the corner, lost the handle. Bagley has it. Bagley up ahead. Bagley at the basket, and they get the bump on Gillespie. And that's the way Arizona State wants to play. Turnovers, getting out in transition, playing ahead of the Villanova defense. Terrific crossover in front of Moore. 
and just able to get into the lane and finish with that length. So good off the bounce, his ability to get to the rim. As talented as you can get getting downhill. And hard to believe he's just a freshman from Carson, California, not far from where I grew up. I'm sure he had to pass the statue of me to get to school every day. When did they put that one up? Oh, that was back in the early 80s. Christopher, by the way, the highest rated recruit in the history of the program. And I mentioned their last McDonald's All-America 2007 with James Harden. Now let's see what your retention is. Do you remember who their first, who Arizona State's first McDonald's All-American was? Byron Scott. Byron Scott, excellent. Stumped you in the last game, but you will, you will not be stumped twice by the same question. Gillespie short on that shot. There was another guy on campus, by the way, hint in terms of what I do in the offseason that was a pretty good athlete in his sport. Barry Bonds. Indeed. There were a lot of great baseball players that went to Arizona State. Reggie Jackson. Gillespie knocks it down. And 5-3 our score here in the early going. Would Arizona State have the advantage in baseball talent over Arizona? Because Arizona has Terry Francona to put up. They do, yeah. And I know that, that he's been watching breathlessly, waiting for his name to be mentioned. That's right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Arizona State, Bob Horner, Dustin Pedroia. Andre Ethier, a couple of the others. I think if we pick a side, we're going to get one of those programs angry at us. <laughs> Shocker. Boy, Arizona State, so good off the dribble. Can score from a variety of positions. And it's not just going to be Remy Martin. What a shot. Great job by Justin Moore, the kid from Maryland who went to DeMatha. Came off firing. Big East all rookie team. Nice job by Birch to spin that one off the glass. And he's got six. Just staying in front. And Villanova's an excellent defensive team. But difficult to stay in front off the dribble. If you help off, Arizona State's a good passing team. Kick ball. We're really impressed with Caleb Daniels and watching him play against Boston College. Really reminds you a little bit of Dante DiVincenzo with his athletic profile. And he put up a ton of points at Tulane. Holland Woods checking in the transfer for Portland State. He's jet quick to give them some scoring. Robinson Earl, jumper, got it. Well, you see a good player. And has really worked on his shooting. Defensively, he's a wizard. Can switch off one through five. He can guard anybody on the floor. And is ridiculously good guarding pick and roll. And he switches off here on Holland Woods. Verge just lost the handle. Now Moore. Verge knocks it away. And it'll be Villanova basketball when we return. Championship game just getting started. We got together with a big Arizona State fan, a guy named Dennis Kennedy, to help create the logo. And Caleb went about researching and the name of every African-American Arizona State student athlete is on that fist logo and really cool. We had to credit those t-shirts all over the place on that campus. And obviously, in the wake of what we've seen this past year with the murder of George Floyd and all of the unrest around the country, social justice 
been a big issue in our country and on campuses across the United States. Arizona State trying to speed the tempo. And out of that timeout, boy, Villanova ran a, a fantastic out of bounds play. They couldn't get the ball in, but Caleb Daniels made a fantastic pass to Cole Swider, who is the inbounds man, to get an easy layup. Daniels here handling with Verge on him. Two point Villanova advantage. Daniels at the free throw line. Rattles at home. But Jay Wright decided to put the ball in the hands of Caleb Daniels. He can get low, he's strong. And then he basically just went one on one for that little mid range jumper. But Villanova's got to do, this is a good defensive team. They got to do a little bit better job of keeping Arizona State out of the lane. With the exception of that jumper by Josh Christopher, it's been layup after layup. And the foul on Jermaine Samuels. Take a look at the, this inbounds play. Cole Swider is taking the ball in. They can't really get it in. He just lobs it up to Caleb Daniels, who really smartly gets it right back to him after Josh Christopher came to double team. That's just a really smart play and alert play by Caleb Daniels. Villanova started 0 for 3, 5 for 5 since that slow start. Remy Martin back in. He inbounds and finds Jalen Graham. And now Martin back with it. Martin's had a lot of size on him throughout this game. Bagley catch and shoot. Little strong. Graham the rebound. Foul underneath. I believe they got Brandon Slater. Jay Wright has decided to go mostly with size to give Remy Martin a little bit more size to have to look over. Now if he catches the ball, great play by Jeremiah Robinson Earl to jump that passing lane. Robinson Earl couldn't finish. And then a kick out. And Swider couldn't handle that. <laughs> One of the problems without fans that the referees have is they got to yeah. chase the ball more. Yeah. Usually to go into the crowd, they get it back right away. DJ Carson is looking at you like, let's go. Yeah, why didn't you grab it? Grab it. Come on, get the basketball. <laughs> A lot of space. Space. Another switch that puts Jeremiah Robinson Earl on Mark. Underneath, I think they got Daniels in a push they did. against Graham, trying to block out the bigger Graham. Mark inbounds and able to find Jalen Graham. I mean, Martin had 26 in the win against Rhode Island. Woods finds Christopher, the two-handed stuff. Look out. On the penetration by Woods, instead of Christopher just standing out by the three-point line trying to spot up, he cuts right to the basket. And that is so difficult to guard. And Colin Gillespie was right near it, but very intelligently decided not to contest that because he was going to give up a dunk and a foul if he did instead of just the dunk. They get the foul on Tayshaun Cherry. Christopher right here. And as soon as you get this little ball screen roll and then the penetration off the reversal, just a terrific back cut. And he plays above the rim. What a player he is now, and what a player he's going to be. Gillespie jumper, a little bit strong. Rebound pulled down by Graham. Here come the Sun Devils. Well, that jumper was strong, but it's contested as well. And Christopher is feeling it. He's got nine. And he's playing with pace in this type of game where it's a little more up and down because Arizona State's quickly getting the ball up court, passing ahead. He's not having to think. Villanova's going to make him think at some point. To 
Hell inside, they got that on Jalen Graham. Cherry went down hard. The foul on Graham is his second. Very lucky that that wasn't worse. Just got undercut by his own man. That's scary, no doubt. Yeah, you can see Jalen Graham saying, I'm okay. But both Graham and Cherry went down hard. Cherry was underneath him and just was holding his head, just making sure that nobody landed on him. All right, they're going to give it to Tayshawn Cherry, which I guess you'd say he fouled him at the beginning of the play. Yes. And then Graham fouled him at the end. Samuels at the line. Yeah, Samuels had the angle on the diagonal drive. You know, every game is a big game for Jay Wright. And he's played for championships before. And, and at the beginning of the year, these multi-team events are, are always wonderful championships to win. But you know, Jay Wright had a rough summer. I mean, the last, he played in a golf event recently at a Ronnie Golf Club and wound up getting beat by Bill Davis and a guy named Shimpy. And when you get beat on the golf course by a guy named Shimpy, you are clearly expecting a, a gentleman's game instead of a brawl. Shimpy, huh? Hard to believe. It's hard to believe they'd let a guy named Shimpy onto a, a golf course as nice as Ronnie. But oh. Jay Wright. You know, Jay Wright also has the distinction. He was the very first guest on 94 feet. I know it. I mean, it, it took a little bit of a speed bump, but it thought he did a, a good job keeping you upright on that thing. Launched yet another successful program, that being 94 feet. Not only Villanova, but 94 feet. It really was a bumpy ride, though, because yes. uh, when I asked him the first question, I stumped him. We got to half court before he, we had to pull the plug on it. Yeah. The question was, what was your favorite TV show growing up? Yeah, really like Mike Wallace. He responded like I asked him to map the human genome before sure. we got to the other side of the floor. Woods gets underneath, kick out, Martin in and out. And Swider pulls down the rebound. Villanova down one. Under 12 to go, our championship game, 2K. Empire Classic. Samuels lost the handle, and it ends up with Grant. Up ahead, Bagley, he'll try a three. And Dixon with the rebound. Bagley didn't hit that shot, but that was a good shot. And he is a, a very, he's got a beautiful jump shot. Marcus Bagley's going to be a big time player. Inside and one, the scoop and the harm. Samuels will go to the line. Stick around for the magic, the first ever. Nice. Junior High, what coach do you not want to coach again under any circumstances? John Beeline. Wow. He's good. Jay Wright. You made it 94 feet. Got that it. was excruciating. <laughs> Back in the day, that's where it all started. That's where it all started. If it weren't for Jay Wright, there would be no 94 feet. So I'm sure most of America are very upset with him for launching that, uh, that platform. Well, right now, Villanova's got the lead, but two players for Arizona State have been wearing them out a little bit. Josh Christopher's got 12 points. He's five of six from the field. And Alonzo Verge has got six. He's three of three. They have been getting to the rim, getting into the paint. That was a that was an issue with Boston College getting into the lane. And when Villanova looked at the tape, they were upset during the game. The coaching staff was upset. They were giving up a lot of paint points. And 
then they looked at the tape and thought, you know, most of them were pretty darn good drives by really quick guards, that the defense was a little better than they, they thought. And it certainly tightened up toward the end of the game. Last five minutes of the game, Villanova was outstanding. Moore hesitated and then able to feed it inside. Dixon flips it up and in. And Eric Dixon with the bucket. Just a freshman. Eric Dixon is a an old school big guy. Burge answers with a bucket of his own. Yeah, Burge was definitely going to go by Dixon when he got that matchup. And Dixon fortunately didn't foul him. He threw his chest right into him. But Dixon. He is really a load down in the low post. He's got good feet, too. Moore backing down. Verge does a good job contesting. Gillespie gets a piece of the paint, kicks out. Dixon. And Martin swoops in for the board. Verge now. But Martin, Pass. good feed. Austin will shoot two. And Remy Martin, that quickness, and located Chris Austin. Burge threw it back to him. And look how far out he is. But look how quickly, a couple dribbles, he gets all the way to the rim to get it to Chris Austin. And Austin, I thought, did a really nice job in Arizona State's game last night. And he came in and really, I thought, Provide a lot of energy for the the Sun Devils. Clarence Armstrong over there. They're checking to see who that foul was on. I don't know why they're checking it. Then the referee who called it know who was on. The foul will be assessed as 14. Definitely odd, Daniels. Austin at the line. Caleb Daniels with a couple of fouls. Here's Austin now. Two shots, a chance to tie the game. Austin came in last night against Rhode Island. He only scored four points, but he had six rebounds and blocked three shots. And did all the dirty work. I shouldn't say all the dirty work. He did he did a, a good bit of dirty work in the game. And his toughness and his defense was really important. I thought the Arizona State pulling out a win. 94-88. Arizona State able to get past Rhode Island. Jumper wouldn't go there from Daniels. Back the other way is Burge. Jerry can't hit a rebound. Villanova, they go the other way. Boy, when Villanova puts a shot up, they're getting back quickly to try to take away transition from Arizona State. Nice job by Arizona State to pick up that charge. And that's three fouls on Caleb Daniels, so he'll grab a seat. And now Cole Swider will check in. Nine twenty to go here in the first half of our championship game. John Shoppy, Jay Billis, happy Thanksgiving. Christopher off the mark, Swider rebound. We'll give credit to Jeremiah Robinson Earl for switching out and then making Christopher take that tough shot. Christopher couldn't get uh, couldn't get by him. Block out by Cherry Verge ends up with it. And they'll get an offensive foul on Josh Christopher. All right, how about our crossover classic? Our championship game comes your way 1.30 Eastern. It'll be West Virginia taking on Western Kentucky as they were able to get past Memphis. West Virginia with a win over VCU and again that's tomorrow at 1.30 on ESPN.
Western Kentucky played so well against Memphis, especially Charles Bassey, who was injured last year for the Hilltoppers. He had 21 points, 14 rebounds, and seven blocks against Memphis. And Boog, Villanova, as well as any team in the country, plays out of the post, not just with their big guys, their forwards, but their guards. They'll back you down, get one-on-one -on -one in the post, and see how he, Jeremiah Robinson Earl just backs in Austin. He gets one-on-one -on -one in the post and just takes it right in there. And if you come double, they're good at passing out of the post and finding the open man, making the extra pass, and then driving a closeout. I'm not sure there's a team in the country that does a better job positions one through five, because Colin Gillespie goes in there a lot. One through five, playing through the post and passing out of it. Yeah, Daniels does it. Justin Moore does it. Yep. They back down or get a piece of the paint in the high post and then look for options. Sometimes they'll shoot a jumper and sometimes they'll they'll kick out. Now, I'm not sure exactly where it started. I think it started with Jalen Brunson because he was so good at it. But Jay Wright just calls him back downs. You know, you get the ball in the wing uh, instead of you know just trying to drive it. You know, turn and back back your guy down, back him into the post, and then play out of it. Beat inside, Swider takes it away. Oh, and they get Swider stepping on the baseline. Arizona State basketball, good job of helping there by the junior from Rhode Island as he was seeing man and ball, and he moved as the ball moves. And when the ball was in the air, he was on the move in order to get over there and steal it. Flying in for the dunk is Tayshawn Cherry. So worried about Remy Martin coming off that for a dribble or for a handoff, excuse me, that Cherry just able to, to keep it, fake the handoff, keep it, and take it in for the uncontested dunk. Gillespie looks opposite. There it is. There, there's the, essentially the back down. Gillespie playing out of the post, passing out of it, and then attacking the closeout. Merge can't answer. Rebound, Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Just vintage Villanova basketball. More shot off the mark. That one deflected, and it ends up with Samuels. Gillespie kept that ball alive. Got to stay down on fakes against Villanova. Moore can't hit. Samuels a rebound. Swider eyes it up. Villanova takes so many threes. That means long rebounds. Gillespie gets inside the free throw line. And he's got five points. Colin Gillespie is under recruited out of high school. His first scholarship offer for a while was at Maine. Bob Walsh could have been a black bear. That's right. And Burge had it knocked away. Villanova in our championship game. Six and a half to go first half, and they lead it by four. Hospitals clean is helping keep businesses clean too. Look for the Ecolab Science Certified Seal. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go inside the play driven by Continental Tire. Little out of bounds play. Remy Martin, the inbound, inbounds guy, and that's the most difficult guy to guard here. It's inbounded to Tayshaun Cherry, and then he's coming off for a handoff. Remy Martin is. Both defenders are gonna jump and go with him, and that's gonna leave Cherry wide open to take it along the baseline for a dunk. Fakes the handoff. Let's the defenders go by and gets an easy bucket. Really well executed by Arizona State. And that was an excellent live read. Thank you. By one Book Shambi. Just uh, between games, had it just a, I got a quick inspirational text from Dan Schulman. And just told me I needed to pick my game up. So. That somebody was inspired by Schulman. Happy Thanksgiving, Schlu. Well, how good has Alonzo Burge been early on in this game? He has been 
Arizona State's most consistent player. And after knocking down the free throws, Sun Devils coming with full court pressure. Just try to change the tempo up. And if you, if Arizona State can slow the advance, it's less time they have to guard Villanova's actions in the half court. Robinson Earl inside, really strong move. Well, he is such a good player, getting better and better. I mean, almost flawless as a defender and rebounder, but his offensive game has come such a long way. And really, in a way, taking over from where Sadiq Bey left off. Bey improved so much from his freshman to sophomore year. Won the Julius Irving Award as the best small forward in the country last year. Gillespie with the steal, Christopher with the foul. Robinson Earl getting the ball into the middle of the floor and faces up. And so he's got the whole middle of the floor to work with. Able to go to his left, spin back to his right. Remy Martin was there to try to take it away, but this young man just keeps getting better and better. What an impressive basketball player Jeremiah Robinson Earl is turning into. Big East freshman of the year. Played at IMG. You know, talking about Sadiq Bay. Jay Wright was, was telling me the other day that his staff had put together some film for the team on sequences of, of here's how we want things done the right way. You know, sort of this is the way we want to do it at Villanova, different, different sequences, different aspects of the game. And after a while, Jay noticed it was all Sadiq Bay. And he went to his staff and said, stop doing that. You're freaking me out. Like, he can't be the only one. And he said, and, and you're kind of making the players mad, too. They, they, they want you to know they do it right sometimes, too. Let's catch them doing something right. But even the subtlety of that is one of the things that helps create culture, right? Yeah. But I just thought it was funny that, yeah. that Jay Wright said, you're freaking me out. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> Jumper from Moore is good. I asked Jay Wright, I thought it was kind of interesting about technology. How's technology impacted their program? And he mentioned John Shackleton, their strength and conditioning guy. And I know this is simple, but they wear heart rate monitors and manage, you know, how much exertion there is per practice. But one of the things he said that's a big deal for him is the day after a game, he always wanted to fix everything. And John Shackleton convinced him that's a flush day, that the day that we're really going to get hard and go after it is the day after the day after. Yeah, because most coaches the day after a game, you know, may want to wear their team out to try to correct mistakes that they had. And, and that was certainly something Jay Wright felt like he did. Yeah. But that flush day was a, a big change in his mindset. You know, the, the, the monitors that they put on the players monitor their heart rate and as you said their load management which is the miles run and then how long they're over 90 percent capacity and heck i mean no really Rolly massimino never even thought about that that wasn't that wasn't anything that was in the lexicon of coaching back then i thought it was interesting because i asked him how's technology impacted your program in terms of a change and he brought it right up in terms of something that you know now the day after a game yeah that's the flush day yeah so Totally adaptive, boy. Mark quickness. Timeout, Villanova. There's four points, the difference in this one. Good one so far in our championship game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's, home for the holidays. Old Trapper Beefs, tough snacks. Out here, nothing. he's the only guy in America that can look good in a mask. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Jay Wright looks good in every scenario, but he's got to be happy with the way overall the way his defense has performed. I mean, I think they'd like to keep Arizona State out of the lane a little bit more, but. 
Really the size they put on Remy Martin has had an effect in this game. Martin's only got five points. And Arizona State certainly within striking distance, but they've been able to slow Martin down. Moore, a little strong, and hit nothing in Seoul. Shot clock violation. Go over to Arizona State. Here on Thanksgiving, our championship game from the Mohegan Sun. Bubbleville, 2K Empire Classic Championship. John Chomby, Jay Billis, thanks for joining us in your food coma. After the Martin miss, that one tipped, and it ends up with Justin Moore. Villanova into the front court. One thing, John, that Villanova does a great job of, they send all five guys to the defensive boards. They might only send two, sometimes three, to the offensive glass, but they always send five to the defensive glass. Nobody takes a, a possession off rebounding. Good play by Dixon to tap that out. Wow, Robinson Earl, and a block by Graham. Christopher up ahead, left hand wouldn't go, Swider has it. Just a little too fast, and that kind of traffic coming to a, a two-footed jump stop and going up strong was probably the right way for Christopher to handle that. Give himself an opportunity to get fouled and finish the play. Gillespie. Gets inside and avoids Martin, splits the defense, and puts it in. Colin Gillespie has eight. That's vintage Colin Gillespie. You know, just backs in his matchup and then makes a play on the floor. His footwork is so good. Grant jumper would go more rebounds, so they get Bagley flying in and a foul. Now watch Colin Gillespie here. You know, just backing down Holland Woods. He's got a size advantage. He's stronger. Backs him in. And then off of two feet, shot fake, step through. I mean, that's a big time post move. Yeah, I said Remy Martin. It was Holland Woods. There's a, you know, you talked about the guards backing down. There is a physicality to all the guards they had. These aren't slight guys right. they all have some some beef to them some strength to them I mean Gillespie at the the lighter end but you know guys like Moore and Daniels really are able to, to power their way down against guards yeah and maybe with the exception of Caleb Daniels they didn't come in that way right you know they they worked in the weight room yeah, these guys have been developed over time, not just developed with their games. I mean, not all these guys played this way when they came out of high school. They've been conditioned to play this way and taught to play this way. You know, the fact when they drive in, they come to a two-footed jump stop and they pivot. And they use fakes. You know, when, when, when the ball's swung around the, around the horn, they make a catch. They catch it to shoot it. If the shot's taken away, they shot fake and they drive, they drive it. You know, always under control, always disciplined on the catch. Austin at the line for the Sun Devils. One and one to hear Chris Austin at the line. This is the front end, out of bounds, Arizona State basketball. College football triple header coming up tomorrow starts. 11 a.m. Central, Iowa State, Texas, then Notre Dame, number two team in the country against North Carolina, and it finishes up at night, 7.30, Oregon, Oregon State from Corvallis. Now, Arizona State, under Bobby Hurley, have eight wins over ranked teams, and they've trailed at the half in five of those wins, including twice against Kansas. Soft touch. Largest lead of the game for Villanova up by eight. Jeremiah Robinson Earl coming off 18 and 10. He's got 11 in this one. He is a player, isn't he? Middle of the floor. 
He's got that shot credibility. If you lay off him and play the drive, he's just going to pull up and, and take that shot. Now, last year, I'm not sure he would have hit that shot quite as consistently as he's hitting it now. But this guy is a terrific player. Inside pivot, little jab step. Tayshawn Cherry has to go for that because he's worried about getting driven. And then under control, just pulls up for an easy jumper. It's just beautiful basketball. Bagley on the left, Christopher on the right, the freshman watching as the Sun Devils down by eight. Bobby Hurley with a great recruiting class. And Bagley and Christopher should be two of the best in the country this year. As a as a tandem of freshman talent, I'm not sure anybody's got two better players together than those two. Gillespie up ahead. Swider. Tipped out Dixon. What a great play. That's a second tap out by Eric Dixon in this game. Just an alert play. If you can't get it, tip it to somebody who can. Villanova with nine offensive rebounds. Robinson Earl just beyond the free throw line, and he knocks it in. He's got 13. That's like a video game. And it's like we're shooting. You know, it's like instant replay. Get it to him in the middle and let him go to work. That one too strong. Gillespie. And the first half comes to a close. Villanova leading it by nine. Wildcats finish on a 10-3 run. And the rebounding advantage, huge for Jay Wright's team. Villanova leads in our championship game. Let's go to the Jeep halftime report. Kevin Cotter, Seth Greenberg, and LaFonso Elf. And they've also done a great job of going through Jeremiah Robinson Earl, getting him into the middle of the floor where he can go one on one against his matchup, either drive it or pull up for a shot. You know, Villanova's only got two assists, and it's not because they haven't been passing the ball, but it's because, you know, they've made the right play from the, the standpoint of, of getting it to the right person, letting them make a move, and then if there's a double team, if you get help defense coming at you, then you make the pass. Robinson Earl going to work, gets in close, spinning, had it stripped away. This is the freshman, Josh Christopher. Christopher inside, puts it up, puts it in, and the foul. And Villanova's in the restricted area there, so you can't take a charge in that area. Robinson Earl probably should have gone up with that first one over his left shoulder going to the right hand. That was the easier shot to take. But Christopher did a nice job of reaching in and knocking it away. And that's really what Arizona State needs to do is at every opportunity try to turn Villanova over. Difficult to do because the Wildcats are so strong with the ball. A foul on Jermaine Samuels is third. Everybody on the floor for Villanova. When you press the Wildcats, everybody on the floor can handle the ball. They really don't have traditional low post players, unless you want to call Colin Gillespie a traditional low post player. That went way off of Caleb Daniels. Well, you mentioned Bob Hurley as head coach and the comeback ability, at least his teams have shown. 26 halftime comeback wins since. 1560, seventh most major conference teams. Bagley a triple. Got it. He's just so effortless from deep. He gets that shot off quickly. Beautiful form goes straight up and down. And he can he can back that up another five, six feet and shoot it effortlessly. Good pass. More wide open, and Villanova with a rare three. Yeah, that's now two of 13 from three for Villanova. You know, the possession before where Caleb Daniels took the relocation pass from Gillespie, that was a great shot, and he missed everything. Bagley another. 
makes a sweet stroke. Every time he lets it go, you think it's going in. Gillespie with Verge on. And a bump on Alonzo Verge Jr. Now, Verge just got two hands on the ball handler. Anytime you got two hands on the ball handler, automatic foul. Good call. Nice one handed pass. And Marcus Bagley does a very nice job of setting up his cuts. Gives a little V cut. And allows himself to separate from his defender. There's a back down from Moore. And then they threw it away. It's a miscommunication. Samuels made a cut. He should have stayed where he was. That ball was coming to him. And Jay Wright. And he made a point the other day in practice that it's it's not going to be perfect, especially early on in the season. We don't have to do it perfectly. We just have to do it together. And that's one thing that this team has been over the years is together. Birch hesitates, lost the handle for a second. Flips that one too strong. And then a foul on Bagley as he Picks up his third on a shove against Samuels. Alonzo Burge takes the ball off the dribble, and then all of a sudden he gets Jeremiah Robinson Earl switching out on him. So now you're, guard, you're being guarded by 6'8, long, wide, and can move his feet. He'd rather get played by the smaller, quicker guard. Villanova by six, our championship game. John Chomby, Jay Billis, happy Thanksgiving. Moore spins, hangs, and gets it to go. Powerful. You know, th this is like for Arizona State playing one on one against an old man on the playground. You know, it's just going to back you down and take advantage of you. You know, Villanova plays older. Arizona State's more athletic. They're a little bit longer, but Villanova just plays older. Man, Reese, Jeremiah right Robinson Earl. How good is Jeremiah Robinson Earl? Complete. 8 0 run at 11 point advantage. And Jeremiah Robinson Earl off that pass by Caleb Daniels, just ready to shoot. Robinson Earl is 7 of 11 from the field. He's got six rebounds, 16 points. And he's got a plus minus of plus 10. Justin Moore has got 10 points, a plus minus of plus 14. Now those are two valuable players on the floor for Villanova, making all the right decisions on the offensive end. And this has been a half-court game for the most part, and Villanova has rested the tempo in its favor and made it really difficult on Arizona State. Nice move by Christopher, the freshman, able to get that to go. He's got 17. He's played so strong in this game, but the real story for Villanova's defense is they've taken Remy Martin totally out of this game. He's got five points in this one. Samuels rejected that time by Graham. Robinson Earl looks opposite, able to find Daniels, had a good look at it, but couldn't hit. Villanova's getting the shots that they want. They're just knocking, not knocking down the perimeter ones, but they're all good looks. Burge, and they get the foul on Samuels. And that's going to be his fourth. Nine-point advantage for Villanova. Champions Classic. Phyllis, how many takes on all those? Just one, although that was the first time I had worn a suit since March 12th. How was it? Uh, tight? A little tighter. A little tighter. I put on the COVID-19. <laughs> wow. Dad jokes. Nothing but dad jokes. Hey, man. There are two things during quarantine that I did. Well, three things. I watched a lot of Netflix mm -hmm. that I had never, never watched before, never even contemplated. Top three, go ahead. And I ate. Okay. I ate a lot. 
and a lot of things that I hadn't eaten in a long time. Not that they were not thrown away or anything, but just sort of a lot of burgers, stuff like that. I didn't really need COVID for that. I've been working on it for a good 50 years, and I've just I've settled into a nice eating pace. And I did a ton of Peloton. Did you really? Yeah, I did. So for the next stationary Tour de France, I think I'm going to be in very good position to get a yellow jersey. Jay Wright told us the only show that he has binged is Billions. It's like the only show he watches. Yeah, I find that extraordinarily boring that he would only watch that when there's so many other options. <laughs> that one rattles in and Arizona State within six as Graham gets the bucket. Now Arizona State really coming after Villanova trying to force the tempo, use their athleticism and length. It was really impressive, I thought, against Boston College, the way Villanova finished the game. And that's going to be the issue, is how, how each team plays down the stretch. There's obviously a long way to go. Burge gathers the Gillespie miss. And now Martin, who's been really quiet, he's got five points. Preseason first team All-America, Burge way downtown. Rebound by Moore. But Villanova is not leaving Remy Martin. They're finding him in initial transition. They're switching out every time to keep it size on him. Justin Moore has done a nice job. Caleb Daniels has been on him. Likely started with Jermaine Samuels on him. Robinson Earl buries a triple. 19 for him. I think if I were Jay Wright, not that he needs any sort of advice from anyone, but I would tell the guys, look, if Jeremiah turns the shot down, then you guys can think about shooting. But he decides first, because he is having another great game. Offensive foul as Gillespie able to get it on Burge. Bobby Hurley a little frustrated. Yeah, you're just not going to get anywhere with multiple dribbles like that. And just a really good job. But you got you got to take it quick or get rid of it. And if you can't get in a straight line drive, you know, Villanova's defense is going to have the advantage there. And Gillespie does such a good job of moving his feet to stay in front, even though he may not be quite as quick as Alonzo Bird. Daniels goes to work here, looking for some help. Ball deflected away at Arizona State with the basketball down by nine. Martin, one and done. Gillespie getting inside. Kick out, Daniels. Gillespie just muscles his way into the lane and you come off your man at all and he finds the open man being Daniels who's sort of as the Villanova way catch to shoot not be ready to shoot catch it to shoot it and if the shot's taken away you go with your progressions from there turn it a flip and they get Graham going over the back is Swider that is his second 12.45 to go, our 2K Empire Classic Championship. John Chambi, Jay Billis, Villanova, number three team of the country, leading 55-43. You watch Gonzaga and Kansas, as did I earlier today. How good is Gonzaga? They're legit. I mean, Gonzaga, obviously I haven't seen everybody now. A lot of teams are shut down for a period, maybe paused, whether it's Baylor, you name it, Tennessee, they're but they're the best they're the best team I've seen. They score the easiest. But how about Villanova? Arizona State makes a run, cuts it to two possessions, and then two possessions later, it's a 12-point game. Good pass. Robinson Earl couldn't finish, but gets fouled. And he'll go to the line and shoot two. Hey, it's going to be quite a challenge for anybody to top Jeremiah Robinson Earl on the defensive end this year. 
there's so many good defenders out there, whether it's Marcus Garrett at Kansas, Davion Mitchell, Mark Vidal at Baylor. But this guy can defend anybody on the floor. He can defend a point guard, a, a big guy in the low post, and anybody in between. His pick and roll defense is flawless. Thirteen-point advantage. Verge gets inside, and a foul called on Robinson Earl as Verge went down hard. What did you watch on Netflix during the uh, quarantine? So I got a I got a sneak attack one to it's a little campy, but are you ready for it? Yeah, it's 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 sort of a continuation from my childhood Cobra Kai Okay, did you see it? I did not so I mean it it just does a really good job of basically taking the first karate kid and Taking it into modern day. I like that. Yeah, and all of the same actors And I think Elizabeth shoes make it a Appearance in season three. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Just well done. A lot of redeemable characters. There you have it. Robinson Earl, a little strong. Burge the rebound. Still a 13-point game. Too much dribbling in one spot for Arizona State. They're not getting the kind of movement they want. Burge gets oh a God. three, and they needed it. Just off a little side pick and roll, guard to guard. And if you don't step right in, they're going to fire it. So Verge with 14. Swider puts it on the floor and puts it in. And all based upon a shot fake. After the pass in the corner, Swider with the shot fake. He's such a good shooter and able to put the ball in the deck get all the way to the rim. Looked like he got hit and still finished the play. Martin contested. Shot wouldn't go. And Robinson Earl is fouled as he was tracking down the rebound. Villanova in control, leading by a dozen, our championship game. Welcome back, our 2K Empire Classic, and Villanova leading by a dozen. The Wildcats have shut down Remy Martin at 26 yesterday. Average 19 last year in the Pac-12, and he has just seen every defender that Villanova can throw at him. Switching out, Jeremiah Robinson Earl picks him up from Justin Moore, then now gets the hand up, Justin Moore stays in front, won't go for the fake, right there to contest the shot. He's been seeing that all game long. As you mentioned, Boo, five points for Remy Martin, two of eight from the field, only one of five from three-point range, and has not seen any open shot in this game. Can't get any rhythm going, nothing in transition. Now there's still just under 11 minutes to go. There's plenty of time for Remy Martin to get hot, and he is a closer. But to this point, Villanova's game plan on Martin has been executed near flawlessly. Gillespie, catch and shoot. Rattles it home. That hit everything. Got 11 now, Colin Gillespie. The soft touch in the front of the rim and just dropping in. And even though Villanova has not shot the ball well from three-point range, they're continuing to take good shots. They're not deterred. That's their game. Bagley gets fouled as he goes to the basket. Got Gillespie on the reach. How do you like your position up here on the perch and we're socially distanced? I'm not going to lie, but I'm enjoying the space. The space is fine. I'd rather be closer to the floor. But it's... It's good. I mean, the, the, the whole thing, just seeing basketball again, I'm just thrilled to watch oh, yeah. the game. Yeah. 
Christopher banks it home straight on. Josh Christopher with 20. I'd like us to be a little higher and a little closer. Then we could just we'd be like the Muppet judges, you know, <laughs> like Statler and Waldorf. The old and guys in the balcony. That's kind of our vibe anyway. <laughs> I used to put that out on Twitter every year saying it was Vern and Raftery. <laughs> Out of bounds, but they get a foul actually, and that's going to be uh, Jalen Graham. Good call, just reaching out over the top. And, you know, Jeremiah Robinson Earl gets so low. Here we are. Hello. We do look like dueling DJs at a house party. DJ JB. <laughs> Gillespie will grab a seat. Yeah, what are we spinning tonight? We're going old school? Bust a move? Something like that. Some Billy Joel here at the what, what DJ plays Billy Joel at a house party? Hmm. Unless it's at a old folks home. From the 2013 Arena of the Year. Billis and Shump. Kick out Bagley. And a feed. And that one out of bounds. And one of the Captain Obviouses gets knocked over. Abiyan. Captain's obvious. Christopher fired off. Boy, Robinson Earl really helped out there and make that a really difficult shot. And the quality of shot that Arizona State has been able to get in the second half has not been high. Another back down for more. Daniels jumper got it. That's a three and it's big and Bobby Hurley wants the timeout. It's an execution clinic for Villanova. Wow, a new Buick for me? To James from James. That's just what I wanted. Is this a new Buick? I secret sanded myself. I shouldn't have. But I have been very good this year. Wow. 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 This year turned Black Friday into Buick Friday, all month long. Now during Buick Friday, pay no interest for 84 months on most 2020 Buick SUV models. Villanova just putting you in a time machine here, just backing you down in the post. Whether it's a guard or a forward, kicking it out. A little ball screen from Jeremiah Robinson Earl and Caleb Daniels able to knock down the three. You go under, and he's going to pull up and rise up and shoot it. They're well defended out of the timeout. Just a bad pass trying to get Marcus Bagley on the lob look. Now that means, you know, you give the ball up within five seconds. It means you're going to have to come down and play defense. I'm surprised Swider took that shot. Christopher kick out. Holland Woods gets a big three, and they needed it. Well, isn't it it's like clockwork that you take a questionable shot on one end, and you're going to give up an open shot on the other. Swider can obviously make that shot. Excellent shooter. But it just wasn't a shot that was taken within the rhythm of the offense. And I'm not sure how many of his teammates were ready for that. They just weren't as alert in getting back on defense. Wound up giving up a wide open shot in transition. Last foul on Christopher, his third. Caleb Daniels at the stripe. Close in on eight to go, our championship game, Villanova by 14. Here's where Arizona State needs to make a move. They've got a lineup 
that they should be able to do pretty well against. Or at least if they're going to make a move, it's got to be against this lineup. Jay Wright trying to get Colin Gillespie a little bit of rest, and he's back at the scorer's table. And they go offensive foul. That's charged to Justin Moore, his second. Villanova trying to corral the 2K Empire Classic Championship. As the trophy awaits. Beautiful ice sculpture. Life affected by oil. Dawn's grease cleaning power takes care of tough grease wherever it shows up. Scrub less, save more with Dawn. Bad Boy Mowers crossover and all part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern at ESPN, Western Kentucky and West Virginia comes your way. So stay tuned for that. West Virginia has some talented big guys. Oscar Shibwe, Derek Culver, those guys can really rebound. At least in the early going, Bob Huggins team making some shots. They're legit. They're, they're, I think they're good enough to make a Final Four run. Certainly knock on that door. And Bob Huggins has been there before, not only with West Virginia in 2010, but in 92 took Cincinnati to the, uh, to the Final Four. And Bob Huggins has over 800 wins. It's really remarkable. And I would I would venture to say that he has the, the prettiest handwriting of any coach in America. Is that right? It, it, it's amazing. He's got beautiful penmanship. I did not know that. Gillespie lost the handle and then kicks Swider. Now at this stage of the game, just under seven minutes, unless Villanova's got something great early in the clock, they're going to use the clock and operate to the end of it. Gillespie wide open. Got to make that. Arizona State the other way. Christopher buries it and the foul. That's just raw talent there. Not a very good foul by Cole Swider. You want to put some pressure on that shot, but you never want to foul a jump shooter. And Christopher just gives a little bit of shake here in transition, stutter step, and rises up. That's a, he was not known as a great shooter coming out of high school. But man, he has a, a nice stroke and just a knack to score. So good off the bounce. Yeah, you watch this kid and you look at where he was considered ranked the number 11 ESPN top 100 recruit. I get it. Yeah, you, well, you get it at 11, then you go, how good are the top 10? Yeah. But. This is a, an extraordinarily good freshman class. I mean, I'm sure you saw you know, Greg Brown at Texas, what he did. I mean, he, he was on the Sports Center top 10 with that dunk he had the other night. Cade Cunningham, Jalen uh, from Oklahoma State, Jalen Suggs at Gonzaga. That's off. That's gold down. Yeah. Score the best. No, 2K Empire Classic as a participant in this event and benefits the Wounded Warrior Project. The participating teams are asked to welcome two Wounded Warrior Project alumni as their honorary captains for the tournament. Each honorary captain is another member of the team. They attend practices, sit on the bench, and travel with the team to New York City. But due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the honorary team captains not able to join the teams for this event. It's one of the things that really makes this special at Madison Square Garden, and obviously, not able to happen, unfortunately, here in 2020. Wow, boy, Are Jeremiah you Robinson Earl, look out. He's got 26. That's a career high. He's just been magnificent. But he's not the only one. I mean, Justin Moore has been terrific in this ballgame. He's got a double-double. The rebounding 
of Villanova. I probably haven't talked about enough. I mean, they've dominated the glass, and every Wildcat has rebounded. And they've been physical, but they've dominated Arizona State on the glass. What a terrific face-up to get past Chris Austin and take it all the way to dunk that thing. And just a great demeanor on the floor for Jeremiah Robinson Earl. Villanova, how good have they been on the glass? I think one of the things he underlined Arizona State hasn't shot it all that well. They have three offensive rebounds. Yeah, Villanova's doubled them up. Now, part of that's been, you know, the, it's been a lot of jump shots. And so they've not maybe a few longer rebounds, but they've not been, been in position to rebound. And, you know, Arizona State's not generated a lot of assists. It's been a lot of, you know, making, trying to make plays for themselves. But you got to give credit. It's not a, a selfishness thing on the part of Arizona State. It's been mostly the way Villanova's defended them. All the different Wildcats that can handle the ball, they can handle it against pressure. Left hand wouldn't go for Justin Moore. And now Verge, voice of three, gets that one. Ten point game, Verge with 19. Alonzo Verge Jr. Still within striking distance. There's a long way to go in this game. It's just a 10 point game. Arizona State on an 11 4 run. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. John Chambi and Jay Billis, do you want to flex for the kids at home? Well, I mean, they've, they've seen it. They've already. never seen anything yeah. quite like this. That's fine. Um, holiday. Let's talk a little bit about Arizona State here for it. You know that they've got the, the firepower to end up pulling this game out. It'll be hard against a team that defends so well, but what does Bob Hurley's team need to do in the final 449 to win this game? They got to get some stops, and, and some of the stops they've had when Villanova's missed open shots, and they've gotten a ton of them here in the second half. You know, Villanova's done a great job of getting back and stopping transition. I mean, the last last bucket that Alonzo Verge got, I mean, they, they pushed it up as quick as they could, but that was a long, tough shot. Uh, it was an open shot, but but it was certainly not easy. But they're going to have to generate some some offense off their defense and try to speed the tempo a little bit. Yeah, after that rebound, a good pass ahead there by Christopher, and then getting down quickly and just barely beating the Villanova defense down court. That's been few and far between for a team that thrives on transition and on scoring off its defense having its defense create offense. That hadn't happened in this game. And it's been largely because Villanova's so good and strong with the ball. Wildcats by 10, four and a half to go in the championship. More, it's a three, got it. This beautiful little screen roll action at the top with Jeremiah Robinson Earl and Colin Gillespie and then just replacing up from the right corner was Justin Moore and the throwback when you don't have the roll man just the throwback to Moore it was just simple basketball. Robinson Earl rebounds the verge miss. And Villanova will walk it up the court. Under four to go here. Wildcats by 13. That was really well defended by Gillespie. Just gave ground, didn't foul. And forced him to try to make the shot over the top. Burge gets inside, couldn't hit. Gillespie comes down with it. It's another one and out. No second shots at all for Arizona State in this game. Here they go again. Gillespie back down. And it'll be 
Villanova basketball. Jay Wright's team 308 away from the 2K Empire Classic Championship. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by NBA 2K21. Everything is game. And State Farm. When you want the real deal like your good neighbor, State Farm is there. Old Trapper Beefs. Fancy flavors. Hey, want a snack? <laughs> what is that, rhubarb? Yeah, I trusted you. Much better. So playing against the, I don't know, the word that just keeps coming to mind for BJ is just steady. Villanova just so steady. Steady and, and their men. I mean, this is an experienced group of men on the floor. Gillespie able to find Justin Moore. Kick out Samuels and verge the board. You know, for Arizona State, there wasn't a ton of time to prepare for the way Villanova plays. Maybe with a little bit more time, you might want to contemplate do you run a second defender at Colin Gillespie, Justin Moore, when they're trying to, you know, back you down, back down a small guard into the post. But you're opening up some other problems there, too. Good Bobby Hurley, if you told him you, you're going to hold Villanova to 75 points or what they have 73 right now with 244 to go. I think his, the problem is that Arizona State hasn't been able to get anything going on the glass. They haven't been any, able to get anything going on the offensive end. They haven't generated any offense off their defense. And usually, you know, with the Sun Devils, you're not worried about scoring points, but against Villanova and how good they are defensively, how good they are in the glass. This is a difficult team to play against. And I think this is where experience is trumping some of the young talent that Arizona State has. I feel like the ball hasn't been in Martin's hands as much as we saw yesterday. And he hadn't been looking maybe quite as much to take it to the basket, or at least just hasn't had those openings and opportunities. Well, he's seeing a lot of blue when he gets the ball. I know that because they're switching out on him. And you know, his very first possession, he had Jermaine Samuels on him, but he's seen, I think, every Wildcat that's been in the game has at one time or another been on Remy Martin. They've not let him breathe, and, and he has certainly not been left alone. He has not gotten lonely in this game. Big, uh, big anniversary in the uh, Sun Devil family, you know. And Nicole Taylor and EJ Taylor have an anniversary. I'm sure they're they're watching their Sun Devils play right now. Nicole Taylor, one of the great PR people, and EJ, one of the luckiest people. <laughs> Shot clock under 10. Gillespie going to work on Verge, gets into the paint, feed inside. That's too easy. Jeremiah Robinson Earl, 28 as he continues to add to his career high. And Gillespie made that play, make a, and we keep emphasizing it because it's so important. He makes his play on the floor. Comes to a two-footed jump stop under control. And able to dish that ball and just drop it off to Jeremiah Robinson Earl for the easy bucket. But he made it an easy bucket because he did the hard things well. Pivoting, getting in two-footed jump stop, getting low and delivering that baseline bounce pass. Just beautiful basketball by Colin Gillespie and Villanova. All right, Sports Center comes your way next. Michael Eves, Nabil Kareem, and they'll take you inside the greatest matchups and top performances in college basketball. Plus reaction from NFL's Thanksgiving thrillers to Sean Watson's big day. 
one on one with Notre Dame head coach Brian Kelly at Sports Center next, right here on ESPN. Did the Washington Football Club take the lead in the in the NFC East today? I believe that's what that matchup was, right? That is horrifying. I mean, it's it's you know the NFC East, but I come from a long line of suffering Eagles fans. First words I learned: boo. <laughs> Suffering Eagles fans, but right. and it's not like Philly Philly fans have been suffering all the time. I mean, the Sixers yeah. have had great, great championship years. The Flyers, the Broad Street Bullies. They won the Super Bowl a couple of years ago. It's been a little while for the Philly. 2008. I'm still traumatized. I was growing up in Los Angeles as a huge Dodger fan. Mike Schmidt and Greg Lazinski yeah. and Larry Poa. Bake McBride, Gary Maddox. What did they say about Gary Maddox? Is, is uh, two thirds of the, the earth is covered by water and the, the other, other third, third by Gary Maddox? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I love that you remember that. Oh, I remember all that. So, I mean, I'm yeah. a huge baseball fan, but a huge Dodger fan. Right. And that, that was back when, you know, those guys had all that hair flowing out of their their caps and big old mutton chop sideburns. Ron Say and all those. Yeah, that was a great infield. Ron Say, Bill Russell, Davey Lopes, and Steve Garvey. I bet you that's what they, everybody thought they were going to get with a buck 53 to go in the championship, right? You're darn right. Go back to the, the great playoff battles between the Phillies and the Dodgers. <laughs> Don't get me started on the big red machine either. That's another trauma inducing couple of years when I was a kid. By the way, the Muppet judges will have more in 80s <laughs> baseball tomorrow. 11.30. That one is out of bounds and it'll stay with Arizona State. 136 to go. Well, that was a nice play by Brandon Slater. Caleb Daniels did a good job staying in front. Slater just reached in, knocked that ball away. Very alert play. Arizona State, I think, has got a, a terrific opportunity to win the Pac-12. So this is going to be a great learning experience, for, especially for the younger players. Good job by Christopher. Got the rebound and then stepped back and got the space. He's got 25. Just a simple break of the press because everybody's in the right spot. They're all good passers and handlers. This young man's got a ton of talent. 6'5", but he plays much bigger because of his length. And Paul Biancardi does such a great job with our ESPN recruiting. Puts out that top 100 every year, which is near flawless. He was talking to me the other day about Christopher saying that that he likens him to a Stanley Johnson type player and I think that's a really good comparison so if he shoots it better than Johnson did similar body types uh, Johnson was probably a little bit thicker but is similar we were out in Maui I'm pretty sure together not working together but we were at both out there yeah. Stanley Johnson's freshman year. He was the MVP of the tournament that year, wasn't he? I think you're right, actually. Good look inside as they find Daniels, the throwdown, and Villanova with the punctuation mark on this one. Yeah, the experience of, of Villanova just won out in this ballgame. The Wildcats are men and played like it. So you see the ranking there, number three, and it is warranted. All right, time now for our player of the game. It's brought to you by 2K, and yeah, that guy right there, Jeremiah Robinson Earl, a career high 28, eight boards to go along with it. He had 18 and 10 yesterday. And he's the MVP of the tournament for Villanova. But he's not alone in playing really well. 
the son of Lester Earl. Look out. I mean, they, they were coming right, right at us. I would have thought security would keep them away from the DJ, DJ Jazzy Boog, no doubt. You do not want to be coming near the Muppet judges. Stadler and Waldorf ready for you. And one, Verge absorbs the contact and he'll go to the line. There is Chris Archie Diacono, of course. Ryan. That name is royalty in Villanova, no doubt. I mean, if the spread is a little closer, stuff happening, but I guess the one thing while we're in it, look, if you're on Bob Hurley's side and you're down 10 or 12, you've got to pressure and hope that you trap force turnovers, oh, yeah. Villanova makes some bad decisions. The thing, I, point I want to make, though, is that it's just not going to happen. No, no. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, when they're up by a dozen, you're not going to continue. They're, other teams maybe, maybe, but with this team, you were not up ten or down ten, down a dozen, going to be able to to trip them up and get multiple turnovers, multiple bad decisions. They just make the right decision too frequently. But there, you know, Arizona State. Uh, I mean, that's we, what they should do. No, I, I get it at the end of the game, but I'm just saying overall, you know, a few plays here or there, and and this is a tighter game down the stretch. Arizona State's not that far away. They're just not. I mean, they got they got beat in this game, and it was it, it was, didn't seem like it was in doubt. I mean, the, the key really was when Arizona State cut it to six, and Villanova answered with those two straight threes and pushed it back out to 12 in no time. That, that's when they they really put it away. But I don't, I don't think Arizona State's very far away at all. No, this is a good team. But the Empire Classic, two K Empire Classic, will take away some of the sting of Jay Wright losing in a run to make to a guy named Shemby. <laughs> really impressed with the way Villanova played throughout these two games. And the down. first two games, really solid. Really solid. Villanova beats Arizona.